Hello, good afternoon. My name is David Hutchinson. I'm the Assistant Director for Capital and Asset Management with the City's Office of Management and Budget. We're here uh, for our fourth meeting on the 2020 Capital Program Facilitation Committee. We're going to go through some introductions um, on our side, and then we can we can review what's been happening in 2020. There's, there's some there's some good news there. We're going to go through our, kind of three of our big departments and some of their highlights for capital projects in 2020, and then uh, some quick updates on the 2021 program. So, Brendan, can I pass it to you for an introduction? Sure. Uh, this is Brendan Katikia. I'm a senior analyst in uh, the Mayor's Office of Management and Budget. Mike Strelick, uh, Council Budget Office. Sorry, it's a little awkward when we're not sitting around a table, going around it the is, table. It's hard to know which way to go. Um, you can, if anybody wants to unmute when you're ready, that'll be a good signal for me. Um, Ross, would you like to jump in? Uh, hi, Dave. Hi, everyone. Yeah, Ross Chavin, Director of uh, Parks and Rec, City Parks. And then from Domi. Karina Rex, the Director of the Department of Dep Mobility and Infrastructure. Um, Chris Hornstein. Uh, Chris Hornstein, uh, Acting Director, Department of Public Works. And then from PLI, Permits, Licenses, and Inspections. Sarah Kinter, Director of the Department of Permits, Licenses, and Inspections. Uh, Whitney's also joined us from our OMB team. Um, Andrew, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Andrew Dash. I'm the Director of the Department of City Planning. Sounds good. And then Jeff, I think. Nice. Yes, I'm Jeff Scalican, I'm the Deputy Director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure. And then Harvey, are you last? Am I missing somebody? It's Harvey Butts, Associate Project Manager, DPW. So um, we want to get kind of the hard, hard news out first. Um, each year we have our timeliness deadline with um, HUD for our CDBG, our Community Development Block Grant Funds. This is um, a math equation we kind of face every year. The, the simple version of it is we shouldn't be holding more than 1.5 times our previous, our most recent allocation. This year, it's looking like we're going to be about $4 million over the limit. There's going to be some further um, invoices coming in, especially around kind of URA personnel and things like that that we're hoping to sneak in before the 131 deadline. But this has been a difficult one for us. Um, the the reality is that we um, have talked to HUD about it. They're, they understand what's going on. Um, our consultant has actually told us that we're, we're in good company. There's a lot of other recipients who are not gonna make timeliness this year. Um, the good news is we won't be losing any funding in the first year that you don't meet timeliness. That usually happens in the second year. For the first year that we don't meet timeliness, we do have to do a workout plan, which we kind of started already with my email maybe um, three or four weeks ago, kind of asking for what the departments were planning to spend in the coming 14 months for each of the outstanding job numbers related to CDBG. So the good news is we're already on pretty good footing to be able to respond um, if we don't make that 131 deadline. The bad news is this same kind of $4 million burden rolls over into 2022 for the January 31st, 2022 deadline. So in addition to needing to spend our regular 2021 allocation, we also need to play a little bit of catch up um, with this money. I will say we have kind of responded to this in a way with the 2021 budget. We recognize that the CDBG funds are difficult to spend on capital projects in certain senses. So a lot of the 2021 funds are actually going towards the URA um, for, for programs helping low-income individuals. Um, they, they have pretty good capacity to be able to turn that money around. So we're hoping that this is not as much of an issue in 2022. In terms of um, the program spending for 2020, I looked at kind of two sets of numbers. I looked at what the overall spending was for um, the calendar year of 2020. And then within that, what portion of that was spending of the 2020 year program spending? Um, I have to say, this is these were really encouraging results. I think the departments did incredibly well getting money out the door given the challenges that came through with COVID. We saw work stoppages, we saw changes in the landscape for who was available to contract with. So I think to have, you know, a historically high spending year in, in the work from home situation is really impressive. So I want to say thanks to the departments for getting over $74 million out the door. I think it's also a great time to talk about how we can institutionalize some of the advantages we might've gained this year. 
Um, maybe, you know, electronic contract execution, I think is a big help. But if there's anything else you can think of that when we go back to the office, we should still be doing, I'd like to talk about that because I think it's crucial to kind of keep that momentum up. I also just like to do um, a, a quick look at kind of OMB and the paperwork that we see go through our office as a proxy for the activity on the capital program. And it's been a pretty busy year um, as well. The important part with this one is we're going to be moving um, to ITQs, which can have a little bit different structure um, for a lot of the 2021 work and beyond. Um, and then I think it's also just worth pointing out that um, when it comes to the document processing, as much as this stuff can be a pain in the neck and can get in the way of getting the work done, um, it's crucial. It's, it's, you don't want to have, you know, um, a really successful idea that ultimately can't get implemented because we don't have the legislation in place, we don't have the contract on time, things like that. So we appreciate your, your work and concentration on these items. If there's anything um, that our office can do, that would be a huge help. Um, so at this time, I'd like to pass it to the departments to go through their highlights. Um, Domi, did you wanna go first? So um, some of the things that we got done um, this past year, um, Domi alone through our contractors resurfaced about 46 miles um, of street. I will um, say that there were a couple dozen more streets that were resurfaced in our um, collaboration with our utility uh, partners, um, principally PWSA. Um, we repaired 23 different segments of concrete brick or block stone streets. Um, as we do every year, we painted over 300 miles of center line and 3,600 crosswalks. Um, our lean and mean team of um, just eight traffic uh, uh, signal engineers uh, got out and were able to retime 45 intersections, which is quite good. Um, we have uh, just over 600 intersections total in the city for reference. Um, we were able to do major maintenance on eight bridges and design advanced design for five more. Um, and we addressed landslide mitigation at 15 different locations. And we are still uh, playing catch up from some of the major landslide activity of 2018, which, um, but also land movement continues to occur. So, some quick uh, images of some of those projects. This is an example of some of the landslide remediation that we did on Commercial Street, Ford Avenue in the right-hand side, um, upper left are street resurfacing going on, lower uh, left, some of the crosswalks that we put out there. I will say um, those are beautiful thermoplastic, uh, high visibility crosswalks that um, we have heard are a little bit slippery. So we've also uh, done material research and developed a new um, material standard with a higher traction um, application for our crosswalks. So um, got those crosswalks out there and innovated at the same time to make them better and less um, slippery. Um, the Lowry Street Bridge, which is complete now, uh, up there in the upper left, uh, as that was going on in Troy Hill, Primo Street, again, land uh, movement uh, before and after uh, on that street, and then um, Arlington Avenue slope stabilization completed project now, but that was a, that was a very large project um, just next to the uh, Liberty Avenue Tunnel. Um, that was remediated there, a complex project, and thanks to our partners at uh, PLI for helping us um, with that one. Uh, in the safety arena, we initiated Pittsburgh's very first Safe Routes to School um, program, and even though most students were, uh, were learning virtually, um, we did um, partner with our four inaugural champion schools who've really been en enthusiastic about this program. And uh, we, uh, as long as they and, and all of my fellow parents are eager to see our students get back to school uh, once it's safe enough, um, but we'll work on some safety um, improvements around those schools and some education um, uh, campaigns with those school children to make sure that they get there safely and, and, and in good shape. We completed 12 different traffic calming projects across the city, including introducing new traffic calming techniques um, that had not been uh, used here in Pittsburgh before. Um, we also collected data on 22 more locations. Um, traffic calming has been a, a great 
um, project, a little bit of a victim of its own success, as we find many places um, uh, would like to see more of that. So uh, happy to deliver, um, but we are needing to triage now where we go. Um, we enhanced crossings at five priority locations, including adding uh, rapid flash beacons, um, which is again, new higher visibility technique uh, at three of the, uh, two of them with a third one on the way. I addressed four high crash intersections and completed major signal upgrades, which are new signal equipment at eight different intersections. Um, so some of those um, examples, Maytide Street, uh, was one of the locations where we uh, introduced speed tables, which is a slightly different version of the speed hump that we use in other places. 40th and Penn, which was a high crash location, um, a senior building um, there at that intersection uh, and then our Safe Routes to School program. Um, worked with Move Forward PGH, which is a, a tri tri-party um, campaign together with Bike Pittsburgh and Healthy Ride to really improve safety. It is a safety campaign um, for people traveling by all modes of travel. Uh, Marshall Avenue, uh, safety improvements there and, and Chateau Street uh, Road Diet. And you can see one of those rapid flash beacons there to highlight the crossing location. In terms of complete streets, we completed our 10 year uh, Bike Plus master plan, which was a really heroic effort and, and grateful for the team. Um, that worked on that it was a big lift five years in the making. Um, and then we went immediately into implementation and implemented over 13 miles um, of low stress uh, bicycle accommodation um, facilities across the city. We introduced neighborways, um, which are sort of a shared street, traffic calmed street um, around the city and completed two new trails, the Monitor Trail in, in Squirrel Hill and the Cattail Trail. Uh, in Highland Park, um, so expanding our trail network. We launched uh, Move 412, which is the new kind of home of the Pittsburgh Mobility Collective, which will um, bring, um, uh, will unite a diversity of different kinds of mobility services for easier use by our uh, people, um, and initiated the 15 of what will be eventually 50 um, mobility hubs uh, around the city, so bringing together um, various services as a kind of first and last uh, mile connection to transit. We completed critical sidewalk gap construction in Homewood and Hill District. We executed a new 10 year um, transit shelter maintenance contract uh, and, and have already started uh, now moving into enhancements to our over 200 shelters that we have around the city. Um, so hopefully community members have seen some improvement there. Uh, and, and a really big lift in partnership with the Port Authority um, is completing um, sort of final engineering design for the, the very um, significant bus rapid transit um, project that extends from the CBD out to um, the East End. So again, just some pictures, uh, gap to the point, one of our bicycle facilities um, that we introduced downtown, the South Side Neighborhood Street, which is underneath the Birmingham Bridge, a new connector there, lot much, much, much safer. Uh, for people on foot and on bike to get through there, new sidewalks uh, in the Homewood neighborhood, the Monitor Forward Trail there in the upper um, left, uh, shelter improvements in the lower left, uh, and the Washington Boulevard Trail, a little snippet of it there. Um, as far as major projects, uh, working with our, our friends at PWSA to um, repair um, the, the uh, nationally known 10th Street uh, sinkhole. Um, so no more sinkhole buses, I'm afraid, downtown. Completed phase one of the Smallman Street streetscape, completed artscape with, with uh, Department of City Planning on Broadway Avenue, which was a great, um, exciting project there. The new McFerrin Street Duck Hollow Bridge, which is a significant bridge project was delivered this year. Um, we started construction on the West Ohio Street Bridge, which is a huge effort. Great, great piece of work there, many, many years in the making. Um, I showed you the gap to the point. Bicycle connection through downtown, um, have completed decking, at least the decking work uh, of the I-579 CAT project, still a lot to do to bring the park um, to fruition there, but that is an enormous project in uh, partnership with um, PennDOT completed design for the Allegheny Circle two-way conversion on the north side um, and largely completed the Vista Street steps. So you can see the Broadway Avenue streetscape, artscape um, down in the lower left, Smallman in the upper left, the new McFerrin Street Bridge on the right, 
um, the West Ohio Street Bridge underway on the, on the right there, the new Vista Steps making uh, great strides in the left, and then the 10th Street restoration um, in the upper left. We also undertook a number of major policies and programs in the past year. So we, as with every other department, moved all staff to remote work, um, which, which was a heroic effort. Hats off to, to all of my fellow agencies and carrying that out was amazing and, and didn't miss a beat doing that. Um, we rapidly had to invent new processes to respond to um, the COVID-19 pandemic and, and help support our businesses. Um, so working with PLI and, and Department of City Planning um, to allow our businesses to extend into the out of doors um, and continue their work there using our streets. Um, completely new, new program developed in you know, a matter of days. So really heroic effort there too. Um, established 40 neighborhood slow streets so that our residents could get out and have some active mobility exercise um, while, they're, while they're sheltering in place in their homes and, and using our streets then as extensions of, of kind of their recreational space. Um, at the time we had only eight shared curbside pickup. Uh, we now have uh, rapidly expanded that to about 40. Um, now uh, shared curbside pickup um, locations uh, we initiated a new autonomous vehicle engagement program to bring the public into this new technology as we develop policies and approaches to that. Uh, we joined uh, PLI and, and uh, Department of City Planning in the One Stop PGH online permitting system. So uh, much more convenience for the public there. We've updated the city right of way policy manual. So that'll be up on our website just shortly. Established new policies and fees for, for uh, small cell uh, broadband antennas that are uh, rapidly expanding across the city. We issued more than 13,000 right of way permits and completed um, the 2070 mobility vision plan and our next two year department um, action plan. So um, really great work on the planning and policy side, just examples of, of the adaptations that we made in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And that's all I have. So, uh, you know, we'll just cover, highlight a couple of, a few projects uh, in city planning. Uh, in the 2020 budget, much of city planning's capital budget projects have actually moved to our operating budget. So, um, although that, although there are a number of things uh, that the department has done, uh, you know, this presentation really just focuses on the things that are funded by the, by the city's capital budget. Um, in addition, as we, as we talk through these, uh, and you saw some of those in Director Ricks's presentation, and I assume in, um, in acting director Hornstein, Hornstein's, um, there are a series of projects that city planning uh, works with our other departments, uh, Domi and DBW, specifically around public art, uh, where the capital budget for uh, some projects may be in another department, uh, but we're serving as, uh, as technical advisors or assisting. Uh, so the first, the first of those projects is neighborhood plans. Um, so in addition to neighborhood plans that were funded by the city's, op city's operating budget, um, you know, in uh, Homewood and the Hill District, um, things that were funded through the city's capital budget, we did complete and the Planning Commission adopted uh, the Greater Hazelwood uh, Neighborhood Plan uh, for the neighborhoods of uh, Hazelwood and Glen Hazel. Uh, we did uh, do significant work uh, through 2020 on uh, the Oakland Plan, uh, which is another uh, planning effort for a neighborhood planning for the four uh, Oakland neighborhoods. Um, these, these plans are detailed 10-year visions uh, for these communities so that the city can align its land use regulations, its zoning regulations, and, and other investments with the vision of the community. Uh, the next uh, item for capital budgeting uh, has been park master planning. And so, um, you know, the city, Department of City Planning uh, does lead the development of park master plans that then um, you know, to find the overall vision for a park uh, and the necessary improvements uh, that would be needed to make those, those visions a reality, working through an understanding of what phasing uh, the, those um, improvements would have to, take, have to take place in, to be able to turn those over to the Department of Public Works, uh, which then works on design and construction. So uh, the park master plans that um, were funded by the capital budget in 2020, uh, we did complete the work uh, for the Sheridan Park Master Plan uh, and are right now, um, you know, looking at funding opportunities. Uh, there has been funding, you know, then for the 21 budget uh, that goes to the Department of Public Works uh, to, to further work in Sheridan Park. 
Um, we are currently underway with park master planning in Emerald View Park, which is our fifth uh, regional park. And we have a parks plan that is just beginning uh, in the Hill District, where we are assessing all of the parks in the five Hill District neighborhoods uh, as a part of that work. Uh, then there are other parks, uh, you know, Fort Pitt Park and others uh, that are funded uh, primarily through our operating budget. Uh, the next is a work that comes under the cultural heritage plan line item uh, where uh, Department of City Planning does the what's called the historic architectural inventory. This is where we go uh, building by building uh, through, throughout neighborhoods and assess uh, you know, the architectural features that are worthy of preservation for, you know, which which then lead us to um, you know, opportunities for grant funding, as well as identification of, you know, historic districts or historic landmarks uh, that the city uh, should be pursuing uh, in concert with communities, uh, community members and nonprofits. Uh, and so work was completed in 2020 for the Oakland neighborhoods and the Upper Hill District. Uh, and other sections of the Hill District have been done in uh, prior architectural inventories uh, funded by capital budget funds. And uh, the last uh, item for the department is around public art. And so um, Director Ricks uh, spoke to uh, the Broadway Avenue uh, public art uh, that went on to, you know, it was a new commission of work that went on the street, um, you know, which were funded by uh, Domi funds, but led by the Department of City Planning. Uh, similarly, there are, you know, there are, you know, pieces of public art like uh, new public art introduced in Whiten Park uh, and others that are a part of Percent for Art uh, for, uh, for public infrastructure projects uh, that the department works with, uh, Department of City Planning works with Public Works on. Uh, in our capital budget, there is money that goes towards uh, restorations primarily of the city's existing public art inventory. And so, uh, you know, a handful of pictures here uh, towards some of the major restorations, uh, which were the Cannon and Arsenal Park, uh, Memorial, uh, you know, Veterans Memorial, uh, se series of those uh, through, you know, Pius Street, the main Korean uh, War veteran, you know, Vietnam veterans, and a series of monuments that are in Legion Park in Brighton Heights. Um, in addition, that those funding also go to uh, you know, major, you know, major incidents of vandalism, which we uh, unfortunately saw more of in 2020 than in prior years. Uh, the two primary ones, uh, you know, where uh, our public art team, uh, you know, then works with DPW and Graffiti Busters, uh, you know, have been around uh, the Doughboy, Mon Doughboy Monument in Lawrenceville and the Christopher Columbus statue, which ultimately was, uh, you know, was determined to be, you know, was by the art commission to be removed. Um, we are doing planning for uh, new commissions or, you know, or reinstallations uh, of public art. Uh, the largest one being uh, around the Virgil Cantini mosaics. Uh, these were a part of the uh, the I-579 CAP project uh, that Director Rick spoke of uh, for Department of Mobility and Infrastructure. Uh, in that case, as a part of uh, the mitigation of historic resources that were a part of that project, uh, the department is undergoing a planning process to relocate or reinterpret uh, that, you know, that, um, that piece of public art with the community. And then our capital budget money is also used as uh, a match for larger grant money. And so uh, $25,000 of city capital budget were, were used for us to get $500,000 uh, of in grant money. And that was uh, for the arts and parks program. So, um, you know, the city you know, department has been developing that program. Uh, we'll be releasing, um, you know, calls for artists and, and other items in early, early 2021 um, to be able to use that money where again, you know, that 25,000 that we received in capital budget uh, ended up turning into an over half a million dollar project. I want to start off by thanking uh, just a couple people, uh, you know, Harvey Butts, who's on this call. He's our associate project manager in public works. He helped put together this presentation, takes a lot of the photos himself. So I like to, you know, start off by thanking Harvey. I also looking forward to just, I know we all collaborate um, myself with um, directors, Rick Chapman, Dash. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, continuing those great relationships with you all and um, actually, you know, expanding upon and improving upon, you know, some of those good works that we've already 
have going on. Um, this is just to be a smattering of our projects. This isn't the whole, um, the whole scope of our work, but I just wanted to give everyone a sense of, you know, the types of things that we accomplished this year, as well as, you know, a sense of some of the improvements that we're making um, in the future. Uh, as you can see here, it's probably our larger, largest project of the year that we completed, uh, Whiteman Park, a, you know, a five-year endeavor led by Andrea Ketzel. Um, you know, we took this kind of older, um, not as functional park um, and used it also with a partnership with PWSA to, um, you know, mitigate stormwater concerns in the area. Um, here you'll see a picture of, of it under construction. So as you can see, like a lot of activity going on, a lot of, a lot of reconstruction, and then we end up with um, a brand new, a brand new playground, a new pavilion, um, some great stormwater features, and still, you know, the semblance of a functional uh, baseball thing, and then the, another few fun elements for the community, also um, public restroom facilities. Uh, this project came in three million dollars. Um, was also assisted with um, uh, state and federal grants. Uh, we also completed a complete renovation of Towns and Parklet. Um, you can see here progress photos um, essentially consisted of, um, you know, completely redone playground um, as well as new basketball court, um, accessibility ramp, um, new park lighting. Uh, this also received some grant assistance from the state. Uh, this you'll see Mellon Park baseball dugout. So this is just a, a small project where we did some regrading with folks, but we also implemented um, a new standard for players benches and shelters, um, as well as, um, you know, kind of just made some minor um, connection improvements in the park to have it better integrate with the streetscape and the, and the surrounding community neighborhood. Um, this is Baxter School Playground. This is actually like a, a heavily used playground. Um, you know, sometimes it's a little known, but the city of Pittsburgh actually um, Ha, owns some of the property of which is adjacent, directly adjacent to um, Pittsburgh Public Schools. Um, and so this is a project that we kind of activated with them and the community to make some improvements to this area. Um, so what you see here is a, a just a redone playground, um, other, some other small site work features to help um, improve accessibility in this area. Um, this is Men Nelson Mandela Peace Park. So here you'll see, um, you know, this was assisted with a county grant. Um, we added some additional spray features. Um, redid some of the playground elements for us recently. Um, so this was a very recent improvement completed this year. Um, you know, a lot of, we have a pretty robust, um, you know, playground renovation program. This is um, another reinstallation of safety surface and playground at Niagara Park. Um, but that's not all. I mean, we do have a, um, a significant focus on our facilities, um, improving operations. Um, we did recently redid the uh, McGee Rec Center roof with a complete replacement, um, as well as our, our shelter roof replacement at the Rhododendron uh, Shelter in Highland Park and the Vietnam Veteran Shelter Roof Replacement, um, which is located in Shenley Park. Those are two of some of our more, most popular um, rentals. I also wanna give a special shout out to our in-house Public Works painters. Um, they completely repainted the interior of the shelter. Um, that enables us doing in-house labor when we can, enabled us to save you know, approximately $50,000 on you know, contracted costs. Um, which is a really big deal because I, I think we all in this current um, fiscal climate that we have, uh, you know, the ability to stretch a dollar and to do things um, is really important. Um, so I want to thank our guys for, you know, being involved and being able to tackle a project and doing a great job. Um, you can see here, um, you know, this is another operating opportunity. We saved a significant dollar, um, you know, painting the facade of this building um, in-house. Um, you know, it's a nice treatment. Um, it's definitely noticed by the community and appreciated and as well as, um, you know, something that we can kind of do um, more efficient from a dollar perspective. 
Um, another playground renovation at McKinley at McKinley Park. This is McKinley Playground. You can see like the, the condition of this playground was deplorable. Um, we were able to mobilize capital funds and and really um, you know dramatically improve the situation for residents in that area. Um, Fine View Park. Um, this is an in-progress photo. This was a community-led project by Andrea Ketzel. Um, you know, really the existing condition was a series of um, little used basketball courts, tennis courts, um, and the playground was in an unsafe condition. Um, so we took the opportunity to um, completely re-envision this with the community where, whereby we were able to, um, you know, shrink some of our court utilization, provide adult fitness equipment, um, provide, you know, some additional just open green space for creative play and then um, able to redo our playground features and, um, you know, renovate a, a light renovation on an existing picnic shelter to make it much nicer for um, the community who uses it. Um, this is Mellon Basketball Court. We have a, what I would consider a program to um, renovate and work um, resurface our athletic surfaces in the city. Um, this happened at Mellon Basketball Court, which is a heavily used um, facility. Um, and you can see here, like there's a pretty dramatic change from, you know, where it was to where it is today. Um, the, same, the same project at, uh, at Granville. Um, this is right next to a community center. So, you know, again, this is another heavily used situation where we're able to make like an immediate visual improvement. Um, you know, Garland basketball courts, the, uh, this one is significant. And I thank city planning for we, we touched on those folks and got clearance on this. Um, you know, this logo was painted by an artist. We were able to track down the artist and do a reproduction um, so we could resurface this heavily used basketball court. Um, <clears throat> And you know, make some changes to some player benches. So you know, an improved surface and improved improved environment for our folks, which you know, I think will be a point of emphasis for public works moving forward. Um, you know, here we also we also delve into energy efficiency. Um, in this situation, this is uh, Westwood Park. Um, you know, where we have two ball fields. Um, we had an unsafe condition with lighting, so we have a program with Musco, who's a sports lighting. Um, manufacturer and installer. Um, this is our, uh, this provides both a safety improvement as well as like a dramatic energy efficiency improvement and a, and quite frankly, a reduction in um, light pollution in the surrounding neighborhood whenever we have, you know, active game night. Um, we also do, um, you know, a mix of capital funded projects with some in-house support. Um, these are putting in um, ADA deck hockey bleachers at multiple locations at Brookline Park, uh, Banksville Park, and Bloomfield Park. Um, you know, here in this case, the city used the capital dollars to purchase those, um, purchase the bleachers themselves, and we had in-house city crews out of the construction division pour concrete pad and assemble those um, bleachers to the specifications. Um, what I really love about this one is, is I think it's a primary um, example of us, um, you know, using funds to supplement, not supplant. Um, you know, so by this, we were scheduled to have a, you know, a bleacher improvement in this location. Um, but by doing this, we were able to get a much nicer bleacher, bleacher situation, which also is, you know, provides a critical accessibility component. Um, you know, we also try to activate a lot of work for public safety. This is just the basic ap apron improvement. Um, you know, this is one that was highlighted by, um, you know, Pittsburgh Bureau of Fire as a situation that um, created risks associated with reduced response, response time, as well as like employees getting um, injured due to trip and fall hazards. Um, so we were happy to be able to get that piece activated. Um, we also do some inline improvements. This is a um, an energy efficiency improvement, moving to LEDs um, with a ceiling replacement. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit more well lit than was current, but also this was this was done with the assistance of a state grant. So we thank those folks for that as well. Um, 
And here, you know, Paulson Rec Center has kind of been a labor of love for us for a couple of years now. We've made, um, you can see in this picture above that, um, you know, the roof was recently replaced in 2019. Um, you know, we're continuing to make improvements into the facility. Um, right now we are, you know, working from the outside in. We're, we're activating masonry repairs. We um, did a win window install um, to improve daylighting um in the rec center situation um and then you know we expect follow-on work in this year for you know some critical um upgrades for accessibility on the interior of the building um coming in 2021 um you know again some of our work is just basic basic um repair and maintenance but of a capital nature so here you know we have a pretty robust roof replacement plan um here this is the uh, the hazelwood senior center um, which we just finished some light masonry work on the parapet as well as a complete um, roof replacement. Um, you know, sometimes these things, um, our work coincides with both energy efficiency and basic replacement. Um, you know, East Liberty Station, which is sometimes also known as Fire, Fire Station 8 um, on North Euclid Ave, um, not only did we have to do a major roof replacement, um, but we also, um, in conjunction with our design program, we were able to coordinate a um, doing an installation of a passive house roof. It will give us a much better energy efficiency profile um, that will also work with future design elements um, in those programs in the future. So we're working, you know, we're able to activate certain pieces of the puzzle, so to speak. Um, I think we all can appreciate that we live in an environment where we don't have the funds to activate all of our projects to completion. Um, at the same time, um, you know, and I give it a lot of credit to my staff for working really hard to figure out how we can, um, you know, carve up the pieces of the pie um, to make the, you know, dollar, dollar amounts in any given year, um, you know, executable, but also working within the, in the framework of a larger program. Um, you know, again, basic, basic uh, concrete repairs to the, to the Shenley skating rink. Um, some new stuff that we've got going on. There will be a new community center um, at Robert E. Williams Park. Um, you know, what you're seeing here is a visual as we work through the community through the design process. Um, that's a very exciting project. That project will also include, um, you know, new playground and some other new uh, park elements as well, and then accessibility improvements. Um, you know, the Sheridan and a Healthy Active Living Center. So we have received some, some grant funding for this. Um, and so this project is about, um, you know, improving accessibility and the condition um, for seniors entering this facility. Um, as you can see here, um, not just accessibility, but we were able to take it and make, um, you know, and activate an outdoor space and make it much more pleasant for, for seniors. Um, in this area. So, um, you know, proud of the team, uh, you know, just a couple quick statistics. Um, you know, we accomplished, you know, approximately 60 projects last year of the capital nature funded by the capital budget. Um, you know, we increased progress on another uh, 60. Um, so right now, you know, of our current backlog, um, plus what we have additionally, we have like 114 um, active projects going on at the moment for 2021. And thank you, everyone. I'm always impressed by the photography on behalf on staff. So thank you also to um, Harvey Butts in, in DPW and Chris Young in uh, Domi. It's always nice to, I mean, I'm a captive audience for this kind of thing to be on with, but it's always nice to see those before and after pictures. I, I think that we live in such different neighborhoods all across the city. We don't always get a sense of what's happening in other places. So to be able to see that in, in these pictures is really nice. So I'm excited about that. So looking forward for fund availability, it's gonna be pretty, pretty similar to what we've done in years past. <clears throat> we usually start kind of bugging the controller's office um, in, in mid to late January about PAYGO to see if we've gotten enough in tax receipts to um, be able to move those funds into the capital program. I can't make any promises this year. So we're gonna go with kind of the more conservative 
um, date of, of mid to late February, but um, Brendan and our team is great at being on top of that. Um, for bond, the, kind of the, the big next date is going to be March 25th. Um, after the, the bond closes, we have to get some paperwork signed by the mayor, and then uh, we'll be able to do the, the transfer of the funds into, again, our capital program. CDBG, we're not really expecting any changes. That's probably going to come again um, in the fall. For um, to the 2012 through 2018 bond funds, I have asked both Brendan and Pete on our team to go back through those kind of more bucket style um, deliverables where instead of having, you know, Sheridan Park, it just says park reconstruction. We actually go back through those older job numbers, look at the, the records for what was budgeted in that, in that year for that project, figure out what's already been completed and what still needs to be done. We actually do want to break it out into that deliverable level accounting, similar to what we have for 2019, 2020. It does two things. It helps us get a better sense of, uh, a more accurate sense of kind of where projects are, what, what projects we're still working on. And also uh, we're hoping we'll help shed some light on the, the projects that came in under budget um, or projects that aren't feasible anymore that we can move those funds through legislation to kind of more pressing needs. Um, and then as an OMB representative, I, I felt remiss if I didn't also remind you to please get your 2021 um, purchasing plan to Jen Olsinger today, uh, by the end of the day, that's a crucial part for them to be able to do kind of that procurement outreach to make sure that you all have um, really good, robust pools of candidates whenever you're trying to award contracts. Does anybody have um, any items for the good of the order? I'll be quick. Uh, I, you know, 2020 was a rough year. It's nice to hear about all the good things we did in the city. So I just want to take a minute to thank the directors and, um, and their staffs for getting all that great work done this year. Yeah, I echo that sentiment. It was not easy and you all did a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah, just quick. Uh, thanks. It, it, to today's point, it, it is really, really amazing to see photographs of, of just some of what was accomplished um, last year. Uh, really, and thanks to this, the close work that, um, that um, A.D. Hornstein provides for my department. I mean, I don't have a you know, have capital money outside of uh, senior program for for personnel. But um, I, Dave, this is a question, and whatever you know, um, but. As far as fund avail availability goes, is there any information about the park tax and when that might hit and how might that be um, kind of uh, in, uh, infused into the, um, uh, the capital program? I don't know. One or beyond? Right. I don't have a, a specific um, update. I will say I'm, I'm encouraged by the fact that it's been discussed more. I definitely understood the perspective of not wanting to add another tax to, to people during um, a really rough time economically, but I'm seeing through the council meetings that it's definitely something that council's interested in. From from my perspective, I would just want us to prioritize projects that have gone through the CPFC process for spending that money because that's all. Those are all projects that have been um, really well researched by the departments, costed by the departments, um, reviewed by this committee, scored by this committee, part of legislation that council's already approved. So for me, that's a great source um, to spend the capital funds that come out of that. A lot of those park tax monies will, will be going kind of more towards operating budget things though. Um, that was the, the feedback from the public is that they wanted maintenance, they wanted upkeep and I fully understand I'm, I'm across the street from a park and I, I definitely get that. So um, it'll be interesting to see, hopefully it's something that we can have access to soon, but I, I understand the, the desire to hold off a little bit. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. All right. If nobody else has anything, I just want to say thanks to everybody for your hard work throughout the year. Um, and feel free to email if you have any questions. Okay.